He will continue on as president, is his intention. He also will not, I'm told, endorse Vice President Harris as his successor. What? The New York Times reporting is absolutely wrong. The president has said that he is running and the story. Good. And so he was just out here in Nevada talking to the NAACP. Since he first got involved in the race for the presidency in 2020, he's been urging our country to tone down the rhetoric and to bring our nation together. Joe Biden is going to drop out. All right. So this is this guy's name. His name is Mark Halperin. You probably heard from him quite a bit. He is someone who was an insider. I think he wrote a book about the Obama win or something like that. Very close insider. But he came out with this report. He says multiple sources outline the apparent state of play on Biden at this time. It says plans to announce the withdrawal from nomination as early as this weekend was Sunday the most likely. So Biden's going to go is what this guy's saying. It says coming out on Sunday most likely. This is catching a lot of attention. Biden's people are furious about this. It says Biden is not going to resign the presidency. Biden will not endorse Kamala Harris, which sounds a little strange to me. That makes me not believe this because I don't know what else they're going to do. So they're going to have an open convention, according to this report, and they would not be allowed to vote on the first ballot. So super delegates would come in. Harris would be on there. Three others. It's going to be like Newsom and Whitmer or whatever. Super delegates will not be allowed to vote on the first ballot. Harris is vetting at least four possible running mates, including Andy Bashar and possibly Shapiro from Pennsylvania. More on this fluid situation on YouTube. So this was a big deal. People flying all over the place on X today. A lot of people talking about it. A lot of people asking about it. And that's because Mark Halperin is a pretty reliable source. He's a political reporter, he's written a bunch of books on this. And so a lot of people were going, what? Joe Biden's going to go? And I'm a little skeptical of it. I think the whole thing is interesting, but it seems like conveniently timed to match the RNC. You know, it's like if you're going to want to push a narrative, now's a good time to push it right in the middle of the RNC, take some of the energy and the enthusiasm away of, out of what's happening at the RNC, and then try to put pressure on Joe Biden when he's sickly and trying to recover from COVID. Insane situation. But here is what they write. And so here is actually Mark Halperin. He was over on with Newsmax and he was explaining this. Carl, according to multiple Democratic sources, this is happening all of a sudden. Everyone said it would happen gradually and then all at once. And that's what's happening. According to my sources, President Biden has agreed to step down as a Democratic nominee. Oh, man. It will happen as early as this weekend. A speech has been drafted for him. Wow. He will continue on as president is his intention. He also will not, I'm told, endorse Vice President Harris as his successor. What? They're hoping that he will endorse an open process in which the convention will be open to Vice President Harris and a few other candidates in Chicago to pick Democratic nominee for president. The belief is that Vice President Harris is already looking at potential running mates to go to Chicago with a full ticket, including one possibility, Andy Bashir, the governor of Kentucky, and perhaps the governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Shapiro. Wow. Other possible candidates who are being talked about include Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, perhaps Gretchen Whitmer, and again, the vice president running. On the first ballot, the regular delegates would be allowed to vote under this agreement that's being talked about amongst the president and high level Democrat officials. The regular delegates would vote on the first ballot. If there is no winner on the first ballot, the so-called super delegates would be allowed to vote on the subsequent ballot. This decision was reached, I'm told, all of a sudden because of the high level pressure from Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, and others, as well as the decision of many of President Biden's top aides. So who told you this? There was the question. No for it for him that he would not be able to win this election, win the general election, and therefore wow. he's stepping aside again as early as this weekend. So Mark, you know, what are the political ramifications for a party that based much of their platform on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and they're passing right over Kamala Harris, and he's not going to be endorsing her, according to your sources? Yeah. According to my sources, he will say very nice things about her. They do not want what some of my sources have been calling a Kamala coronation, that the problem in part that they found themselves in was that President Biden was not seriously challenged for the nomination. I'm told by some of her people, I don't know that the vice president thinks this, but some of her people believe she will win this, that she'll choose a strong running mate. That's crazy to me. The Joe will not pass the torch to her. How can he get away with that? It's his vice president. He's going to look like the most disloyal piece of crap ever to not turn around and give it to her. Say, look, I got to go. It's not right for me, but she's not number two. They've been supporting each other for the last three and a half years. And he's going to say she's like moderately OK and open this up to a wild free for all at the convention. I don't think so. That she does have the support of many of the delegates who are Biden Harris delegates and that she can win this basically on her own. And at least yeah. one of her allies said to me, this is better, better to not be anointed by Joe Biden, better to show independence, better to show with a strong ticket the capacity to win the nomination on her own. Well, Mark, that said, though, I mean, you're very familiar with campaign finance laws. He has, you know, 200 and 300 million in his war chest right now. I believe, in my understanding, is Kamala would be the only one who could absorb that and continue on the campaign. How's that going to work when all their big pocket donors have already pushed for that? Well, there's lots, all sorts of money, right? There's super PAC money. There's low dollars. The belief is that a new ticket will inject excitement into the party and that both low dollar donors and the big donors in the last few days have sent a strong message to President Biden that they will not support his 
being the Democratic Ooh. nominee. So there's a strong belief that with a new ticket that they can raise money from the big dollar donors who can give and bundle hard dollars, can give super PAC money, right. as well as the small dollar donations that they will come in to whatever the new ticket is, whether it's the vice president or not. If it is the vice president, most campaign finance experts believe she does get to keep the Biden-Harris money. All right. So big, shocking report from that guy. A lot of people say it's very credible. Robert Costa, who does reporting for some big entity called CBS News, he wrote this. He says, sources close to the president tell me tonight that they're furious that while the president is trying to recover from COVID in Rehoboth Beach, a pressure campaign keeps picking up speed. Lots of anger towards some donors for talking of money drying up if he doesn't quit towards what they see as muted support from Obama and toward Dem leaders who one source say they're hiding behind statements, which I agree with Biden on this. They're being absolutely cowardly as hell. Like, just come out and say it. If they want him out, they'll have to push, source adds. He's not going anywhere. He feels disrespected. Good. He is being disrespected. The voters have already spoken. And many of these people up until one bad debate night were in his camp saying how vigorous Joe Biden was. He's doing backflips all over the place. He's like, you know, amazing. Still a fluid moment. No one has figured out an effective way to quiet this drift of nervous Democrats away from Biden. And no, many Dems want Biden to just break at some point. They keep harassing this dude. They're insurrecting this dude. Okay. Which is ridiculous. He is their nominee. He represents the Democrats. And so he shouldn't be going anywhere. And we have more clips of this. So the RNC clipped this one for us, just dropped this one about an hour and a half ago, said here that the Biden campaign co-chair Cedric Richmond says, absolutely not. Okay. He's not going anywhere. Now, the problem with all this, of course, is they stay in until the very last minute. Then they leave. And then we all go, ah, uh, okay. So you were just plotting, you were just planning and getting your pardons in order before you were going to make your decision. So here is what the campaign spokesman said for Joe. Can you first talk to us about whether the reporting in the New York Times and in other outlets is correct that President Biden is considering stepping off of the Democratic ticket? The New York Times the reporting is absolutely wrong. The president has said that he is running and the story. Good. And so he was just out here in Nevada talking to the NAACP and he is running his campaign along with the vice president. Good. So he's sticking around. That's good. That's exactly what we want to see because he's their nominee and he represents the Democrats perfectly. So sources are very upset that this is even happening. I don't know what their problem is. Joe Biden seems perfectly fine. In fact, here he was. I think he might have been trying to kiss this other woman, which, you know, is a common thing that happens. You know, it's hard to tell. First of all, Jill's in blue and that other woman's in blue. Jill has blonde hair. That other woman has blonde hair. And, you know, they're about the same age, it looks like. So he's about to, you know, get down on the get down. He's like, hey, what's up, mama? Is it bedtime now? Is it nap time? What time is it? Is it 6 p.m.? Do I get my ice cream now? And Jill comes up and says, hey, that's the wrong woman. Look at this. Like, look how close they are. Talk about personal distance. Is she trying to kiss him? What's going on? All right. Anyways, here's the president. He's totally competent. He can definitely do this. Joe. Oh, it's me. Oh. <laughs> He's like, I really like that woman, though. Anyways, all right, so funny stuff. Who knows what the hell he's doing? He doesn't know where he is. So we have other reactions. So they brought out this guy, co-chair, Chris Coons. Yeah, Democratic National Co-chair for Joe Biden, of course, getting into this, saying, are you sure he's not going to leave? Are you really sure? We have the new clip. This got clipped by OSINT Defender. He shared this from Christopher Coons, who is explaining about Joe Biden's candidacy, that it's looking like he's going to stay in the race. All right, so here is that. Percent ruled out the possibility of leaving the race during the course of all of your conversations with him. In my conversations with the president, he's been asking for input. He's been asking from all of us who talk to him regularly for counsel, for input on the polls, on the opinion of our colleagues. But he has communicated to every Democrat in writing that he intends to continue this campaign. Is he even considering it leaving? Look, I think he weighs very seriously the input of those he trusts and admires, those who've served with him. And beyond that, I'm not going to get into the details, Wolf. I think he deserves the respect of being able to reflect on this moment. But I think after the tragic shooting in Butler, Pennsylvania, he showed us what kind of a leader he is. He called former President Trump. He expressed the prayers and the concerns for a rapid recovery from him and his wife, Jill. And he has called for our country to come together. Since he first got involved in the race for the presidency in 2020, he's been urging our country to tone down the rhetoric and to bring our nation together. That's what he said in his inaugural address. That's how he has led as an effective bipartisan president who has gotten more done than any president in my lifetime. And that's the kind of actions he's taken in recent days to reach
reach out and to show that he is determined to lead our country forward in a way that respects the best of us and the most optimistic aspect of us as a nation rather than further dividing our country. Okay. One final question. Is he even considering leaving the race? Okay. You just asked that. He just answered that. Well, if I haven't spoken to him in the last few days, I shouldn't speak to that without direct knowledge. But I will tell you, like every Democrat, he's very concerned by what we're hearing from Milwaukee, where an inexperienced anti-abortion zealot has just been placed one heartbeat away from a 78-year-old who has no new answers for America's challenges on that convention stage in Milwaukee. So he's answered that multiple times, and Wolf just doesn't like the answer. Are you sure? Has he made a decision? Yes, he's made a decision. Has he made a decision about staying in the race? Yeah, that's the decision I just answered. Is he going to decide again? He's already decided. But what about tomorrow? Will there be new decisions tomorrow? He's staying in the race. Leave us alone.